Hi, welcome to another edition of Motor Age How To's video series, The Trainer. This month, we're on location at the Pinellas Technical Education Centers in Largo, Florida, and the topic is fuel system diagnosis. So stick around, we've got some great tips and techniques for you on this edition of The Trainer. An engine needs fuel, spark, and compression to run properly. The fuel system needs to deliver a clean, constant supply and deliver it to the engine in the right amount and at the right time. One of the first steps in troubleshooting the fuel system is to measure the pressure using a mechanical gauge. But before you connect the gauge to the provided test port or open the system to install a test fitting, be sure you know where your shop's fire extinguisher is located. If you follow proper service procedures, it isn't likely you'll have a problem but it's always best to expect the unexpected. Before you connect your test gauge, you'll need to bleed the system of any residual pressure in the lines. Check your service information for a recommended procedure. If you can't find one, one way to bleed off the pressure is to use a scan tool's bi-directional control to command an injector open after the pump has completed its initial key on cycle. You can use a manual injector trigger if your scan tool doesn't offer this option. Fuel pressure may be measured with the engine off or running, so make sure you read the specs fully to see which operating condition applies to your vehicle. If tested key off, engine off, cycle the key a few times to get a peak reading. Then let the gauge sit while you look for pressure to bleed off. Rapid loss of pressure can indicate a leaking injector, pressure regulator, or a failed check valve. If tested key off, engine running, Burp the pressure gauge to remove trapped air from the test lines. Be sure you catch the fuel in a clean container to prevent spills and to give you a sample you can check for alcohol, dirt, or other contaminants. I once found coolant in a fuel sample put in that customer's car by a disgruntled boyfriend. Low pressure can be caused by a failed regulator, worn fuel pump, excessive resistance in the fuel pump electrical circuit, or a restriction to flow downstream of the pump. Delivery is not just about pressure. Commonly overlooked is the volume of fuel the system can deliver. Low volume issues usually show up when load is high and demand is greatest. Specs here too vary, so look up the specifics for your car. One quick way to check for an obvious lack of volume is to run the engine at idle and crack open the bleed valve on your tool. If the engine sputters or dies, suspect a problem with volume. And remember, Capture that fuel in an approved container. There are other ways to test the fuel system, and in less time. Using a scope with a trigger, low amp clamp, and pressure transducer can provide a lot of information without even opening the fuel system. The first connection I'm going to make is a trigger lead to the number four ignition wire. No particular reason, but having a trigger on the ignition wire allows me to trace the pattern and isolate which cylinder is at fault by following the firing order. The next step is to access the fuse box and from there identify the fuel pump fuse and or the fuel pump relay. With the proper fuse located I'm going to remove the fuse and install a bypass or fuse jumper wire. This gives me a place to attach my low amp clamp and allows me to monitor fuel pump current. The last connection I'm going to make is a fuel pressure transducer in place of my mechanical fuel pressure gauge. With all three components now in place, it's time to get my pattern. This sample pattern is taken from a V6 engine. The red trace is fuel pump current flow. The green trace is the signal from the pressure transducer attached to the fuel rail, and the blue trace is the number one injector. You can use either the injector signal or the ignition signal as a triggering event. Let's take a closer look at the fuel pump current pattern. Here's what a typical one looks like when we zoom in for a closer look. Notice how the pattern repeats itself after every eighth peak. 
What you're seeing in the pattern is the amount of current passing through each individual segment. See how this dissected fuel pump shows eight segments on the fuel pump motor's armature? Some pumps may have 10 or even 12 segments. So look for that repetition in the pattern. The first use of this pattern is to get an idea of the electrical health of the fuel pump motor. Any weak spots, weak peaks, or abnormalities in the pattern can indicate wear in the brushes and commutator strips, and a pump that may have very little life left in it. We can use this pattern to measure overall current draw. In this case, it's about 5 amps. That current draw often equates to the amount of fuel pressure in the system. General rule of thumb for many systems is 1 amp for every 10 psi of fuel pressure. We can also measure how fast the pump is spinning. By using the time cursors on the scope, we can measure how long it takes for one revolution of the armature. In this case, 10.62 milliseconds. Time 600 will give us the RPM or speed of the fuel pump motor. The current draw of any motor is affected by how hard the motor has to work to do its job. A fuel pump that has a real high pump speed but a very low current draw generally means that the pump isn't working very hard. Modern fuel pumps are housed in a well. The well is designed to keep a constant supply of fuel available to the fuel pump no matter what the vehicle might be doing. At the base of the fuel pump module is a strainer to keep debris out of the well. There's a similar strainer inside the well attached to the base of the fuel pump itself. It too is designed to keep debris from entering the fuel pump and making its way through the fuel delivery system. Should either of these filters become clogged, the fuel pump won't be able to draw fuel in and it's just like it ran out of gas, even though the tank might be full. The reverse side of that is a low RPM made with a high current draw. This in a case the pump is working really hard, likely because of restriction downstream of the pump. The most common cause for a restriction downstream of the pump is a clogged fuel filter from lack of maintenance. Once in a while you'll see a low current draw mated with a normal or low pump speed. This could generally indicate that there's a voltage drop or excessive resistance in the fuel pump circuit. Time to pull out your multimeter and do a few pinpoint tests. Well, I think we've gotten just about all the information we can out of the current side of the waveforms. Now let's take a closer look at what that pressure pattern might be able to tell us. Among a few other things, the pattern generated by the pressure transducer can help us gauge the health of the injectors themselves, making it a little easier to spot any that are leaking or sticking or dirty. In this pattern, we have each of the pressure drops from all six injectors highlighted for you. Notice how the pressure drops are fairly uniform. Don't suspect there's any problems on this particular engine with a leaking or dirty injector. What is curious are these squiggly little lines in the pattern on every other drop. Could that mean something? Don't suspect though in this particular case. Again, these patterns are going to vary from engine to engine based on design. In the case of the squiggly little lines that you see on this pattern, they tend to correspond with the front bank of this V6 engine. That's also the point that's closest to the test port. The ones further away, and thus having their signals dampened by the fuel rail, show a lot smoother pattern. Well, that's all the time we've got for now. Until next month, this is Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine, for The Trainer.